for the first time in history I'm gonna try to beat myself and this is a tough one as I said 2400 was my very peak it's the highest rating the highest strength I ever had and that was a couple of years ago I'm clearly not at the same competitive level I'm clearly not at the same um, practice level either I used to train a lot I don't train anymore and I'm helping you guys to get better helping other streamers to get better at their chess but without further ado we're gonna see how strong is Annabot and if she has some nice comments for her opponents or is she gonna be a trash talker please tell me she's not a trash talker <laughs> challenge no help of any kind and uh, Let's see if she plays the French defense. I'm gonna pick white and see if she's gonna go for the French defense, which, which is my favorite opening. I saw yesterday someone tweeting that the Annabot played um, the Petrov, which was my opening as a kid. The Karakan, I played a couple of times too. The Karakan, I learned to play for special games, for specific occasions, as a surprise opening. And now she wants to surprise me. I wonder what her first words will be so far she's playing a sister opening of the french defense the karakan thank you nacho for the subscription thank you for the support okay um this is the line i learned as black yes bishop g4 let's see if she, if she takes yeah that's solid i, I was gonna say <laughs> i was gonna say that's what i would play as black too the first capture is in the box seriously anna you're so smart so smart so this is a position where white has the pair of bishops, but black structure is, is very solid. It's exactly what I play with both colors. I play this position with both colors, mostly with the white pieces, but the couple of times I wanted to use the Karakan as a surprise weapon. It was mainly at uh, European Championships and Chess Olympiads where it matters that you have a really good surprise line prepared. Taking is an option. She could take here after bishop g2, take and then go for an endgame line. Or knight d7. I'm just gonna d3 or castle. I was gonna say castle. Yeah, that's castle first. Actually, I don't know which move order. D3. I'm gonna go for d3. Okay, d4. Anna is expanding in the center. So strange to say. <laughs> I'm playing against myself. I still can't believe it. It's some kind of a strange universe where you can play against yourself. Giving a check on a5. What's her idea? Bishop b4. Jeez, you are an annoying person. She really is annoying because now if I take the bishop, she'll take back with the queen and that's a check and then I cannot castle because you cannot castle from check. If you are in check, you cannot castle. Um, and she's attacking my king, attacking the pawn. And now this is hanging. Wait, are, am I in trouble already? Am I getting into trouble against myself? Anna, this was not part of the plan. I'm gonna push this pawn. I'm gonna push this pawn. Goodness me, I blundered. <laughs> I blundered against myself. I blundered this move, which attacks my queen. And if I move the queen away, this pawn is gone and attacks my king. I'm totally, I'm totally in a lost position after 11 moves. And a bot is crushing me. I don't even have... See, wait a second. I was telling you about that pawn and, and how my king is in trouble. It's not only my king. I'm losing my queen right now because the only square I have for my queen is f4 and after queen f4, knight takes d3. It's a fork that wins my queen. Mango Jill, thank you for upgrading to a gold <laughs> membership just when I'm losing my queen. I'm playing the bot as gambit against myself. I'm completely destroyed. My bot check? Really, Anna? <laughs> well, at least she's not telling me something something more offensive um, that I'm a loser or such because I lost the game I'm, I have to resign Mr. Shaiba would say now you resign and I think he's right this is a position to resign it's a check my queen is in the air I'm lost I have a lost position after 12 moves goodness me if you are an annoying opponent Anna I already dislike her I already dislike her. <laughs> Bago, thank you so much for the subscription. Let's try this again. The first game didn't really go well. Hello, I'm done with work for the day. Wait, what did she say? I'm done with work for the day. Um, I couldn't read it. That was too, too fast. Oh, I get to play the French defense against Anna. I need to move the sub goal so that you guys can see what she's saying. But she had some kind words. She was saying something nice. She was saying something nice. 
I'm gonna put the sub goal here. Some people don't like the French defense, but I love it. That is absolutely what I would say. She knows me so well. Feels like she's myself. I guess, I guess she really is me. I guess she really is me. <laughs> Goodness me, I lost in 12 moves with the white pieces, but now we are back at it, playing the French defense. Interesting that she's playing this line. Bishop e7 is my my favorite pet line against the Tarash. I think she knows it. She knows me too well. <laughs> she knows me too well. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna win this e5 pawn, but the position is quite messy. There are all sorts of ideas for white too. Knight f3. I think I can either just trade or play queen c7. Um, tra I'm gonna trade because I didn't wanna necessarily place the queen there in case the bishop is coming to f4 later and now I'm just gonna develop my pieces, try to castle before it's too late. I don't wanna lose this game in 12 moves. Guys, it's gonna be an accomplishment if I make it to move 13. Let's try to make it to move 13. Castle. So I could win the pawn now by taking here, knight takes, then I have this queen check, which also attacks the knight. So I'm gonna be a pawn up, but I think Anna has quite some compensation for it if she castles and then tries to attack on the king side. But I'm a pawn grabber, Anna knows it, so I'm gonna go for it. <laughs> I'm just going for it. I'm gonna go for it and then take the knight back. So it's stuff coming after my king. That's exactly what I would say to I hate to be attacked. I absolutely, that's the worst for me in chess when my king is under attack. I, I don't feel good about that. I guess many people don't feel good about it, but me particularly in my competitive years too, that was my one of my weaknesses. That, def uh, that I had to learn how to defend with just a cool mind and, and not be too nervous about my king under attack. Um, I guess I'm gonna come back because she wants to take here and that's annoying. So she's got a pair of bishops. She's got the pair of bishops for a pawn. I'm a pawn up, but the pair of bishops is usually a pretty strong asset and compensates for it. I need to develop this bishop. This would be a way to go or this, but I think this is more natural. She's placing the queen on the g5, but that doesn't create a threat just yet. I can take back here with the queen, so I'm good so far. But maybe what she wants... Wait a second, she's sneaky. She's sneaky. She wants to place the queen here and then take here, and then it would be checkmate. So once the queen is on h4, I need to push this pawn to not get checkmated. Now, my name, when I started recording video series is was miss strategy and miss tactics is my good friend sophie gogoramishvili so i don't think anabot is the the biggest attacking chess players in the world um i'm not too scared i'm not too scared of her attack she's more of an end game player positional strategic player taking good slow winning a game in 20 20 not maybe 70 moves in a rook end game that would be my style that would be my style I blundered! <laughs> I'm just explaining. I was just explaining how her idea is to go for this attack and I completely forgot that the queen and the bishop are on the same diagonal threatening to win my rook. Why do I keep blundering against myself? How do I not see what she wants? Like I should be thinking the same. I should see what she wants. I don't. I blunder so badly against myself. Again! <laughs> I blundered! My exchange! My rook is gone! She's gonna take the rook for the bishop. I'm gonna keep the game going for a bit. <laughs> because I have I have a minor piece and a pawn. So a minor piece is three. A bishop and a knight, they are both worth three each. A rook is five, a pawn is one. So I have four points versus five. Um, and a pretty bad position. <laughs> we survived uh, until move 16. Amazing. Goodness me, my bot is 
so far pretty impressive much more impressive than irl anna at her current level why do i keep blundering i warmed up today with puzzle rush i should see the patterns but i don't i keep blundering them she's coming here how annoying she really is very annoying oh okay let's go for some attempt of counterplay even if even if she's going for the right maneuvers damn anna stop stop it stop it <sighs> this is in the air when the rook moves she could go for a rook lift like this too pretty annoying position and this queen move it's not only helping for white's attack but also stops my idea i wanted to push the pawn here she's damn annoying i'm gonna move the king here to make this a bit safer even if it's not very safe since she's bringing the last attacking piece into the game that's exactly what i teach in my coaching sessions but i guess she knows it too somehow she knows it why am i not surprised that she plays the same way she preaches she plays the way i preach i don't play the way i preach <laughs> and she's going for it she's going for that rook lift ah once the rook is here this track is a threat i could then push h5 she probably will go back to the g5 that's what i that's what i would do and i guess she thinks like me too much she thinks like me but in in an optimal way so she's she pretty much is like me but at my very best and today i'm clearly not at my best in terms of my blunder skills i'm on peak blunder level today this is hanging um if i jump away i don't have too many squares here i'm gonna be captured multiple times this is a bad square in general this is also really passive but i might have to go for it i don't have many good ones but wait a second I think I understand what she's doing now again because she's attacking my knight first so when I move away with the knight she's gonna come back here threaten queen h6 threaten queen h7 she really is annoying okay I'm gonna go for this I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of in a bad situation here obviously still trying to survive because that's something I also teach even if Mr. Scheibel says now you resign I have I have a piece and a pawn for the rook so it's not dead lost but yeah pretty lost a pretty bad position she's threatening to take she's threatening queen h6 i gotta push this pawn but if i push she may just end up going g4 this is the kind of move that as an attacking player since that's not exactly my style i would know that i probably should play it but it doesn't come natural to me she see it doesn't come natural to her as well to tear up the king side and go for a risky move that's not that's not how anna's play that's not anna's play it's more about like weakening squares the dark squares are weak she's trying to get here and capture my free rook that's hanging this is such <sighs> such an annoying style i didn't realize it's so annoying to play against me because this is hanging she's trying to crawl into the position with the queen through the dark squares man if it's annoying to play against me will i trade queens because i'm pretty much in trouble i could <laughs> the position is bad regardless but at least then i don't get checkmated she doesn't want to trade queens but wait i was hoping for a second she blunders too but the moment i take the bishop she will give this check and pick up my rook why does my bot not blunder but i do in real life especially now that i'm out of shape i blunder oh very annoying girl super annoying how many of you have played against my bot have you had the same experience she's playing these positional strengthening moves going through the dark squares poking the king here poking the king there now also going for the center and making sure that if i take because this was my plan to try to go for a counterplay she'll take back d4 i think i should still do it because i don't really have much to play for she may just take back with the pawn even damn anna stop she's killing 
all sorts of counterplay because I was hoping if she takes back with the queen if she takes back with the queen I could push this pawn and at least I have a pass pawn but she wants to eliminate every possible counter chance and that's what I was known for too because it's better to minimize r risk. There's no, not much risk factor when you make sure that your opponent doesn't have a pass one, that your opponent doesn't just get a free attack. So she plays very much like me, but in a better version. In a better version. <laughs> no, big thank you so much for the subscription. Um, I could push this pawn, as you guys are saying, because that would attack the rook. Um, but I need to see if I want the pawn there, because... I don't think the bot will, I don't think the bot will blunder the rook, so the rook will go, let's say, to g3 or h4, g3 I would assume, and then my pawn is hanging, so I need to see if I have a follow up there or not. Um, and the thing is, I can still never take this bishop because she will take the pawn and get my rook. So is e5 and then something, a good follow up, I guess I gotta try to do something, to activate my pieces, I gotta try. So, again, if I take the bishop, she takes the pawn, that's a check, picks up my rook. If I push the pawn, the problem with that is that I'm fixing my pawn structure in a way that she will place her queen on d4, and that will be... that's. That's again something I used to do as a competitive player, just go for weakening my opponent's position, weak squares too, not just weak pawns and pieces. I would, I really enjoyed weakening my opponent's position and go for those, those squares that are holes in my opponent's position. So like, I know what she's doing, I understand what she's going for. And therefore, I don't want to let her do it. I don't want to have such a good time here. I don't want that. Um, so I think I'm gonna end up guarding this pawn, but it looks it looks terrifying. I have built I have built the bathtub, as you guys know from the chessable broadcast. This is the bathtub, but the bathtub right now has a really weak spot. This one. If I push the f pawn, this is hanging, and. This is exactly what she's doing. She's forcing me push e4, which will attack the bishop, but that gives up the d4 square. I think they programmed her too well. She's doing exactly what I used to do. Wait, she's sacrificing? This I did not do much. I did not sacrifice often. Why is she giving up the piece? Takes, takes. Am I in trouble? Goodness me. Is that... I can still play f5. I don't think I get mated. I used to go for the, the positional style of play, not too many sacrifices. I would only sacrifice if I, if I saw the line that will win the material back or give checkmate. So she wants to take on g6 and give checkmate later, but um, I think I can still push this pawn. If I play bishop f5, she can take that because of the pin, but I think f5 I have. Although after f5 she has a super annoying check here, but that super annoying check is not that annoying if I take take king here She cannot take my bishop because I have back rank checkmate. <gasps> Do you guys think that she will blunder back rank checkmate? Please tell me, please tell me she's gonna blunder back rank checkmate I blundered it as a kid, so maybe they have programmed her in a way that she plays some of my best but also some of my worst moves. I, I did have games as a kid where I blundered back rank checkmate. Please tell me, <laughs> please tell me she can. I don't think so, but let's see. She doesn't even trade queens because my king is weaker than hers. And that's also something I always emphasize in my coaching sessions. In order to know whether you should trade queens or not, compare the kings especially, because if the opponent's king is more vulnerable, it's weaker than yours, then keeping the queens on the board makes a lot of sense. Unless you have a winning endgame where you're gonna promote your pawn, yeah, go for it, but now my king is still super exposed and her king, except for the back rank, is safe. I think she will end up pushing this pawn at some point, bring this rook here, triple stack on the e-file, or rook here. Oh, I don't like this. This is hanging too. I'm gonna move the knight here that guards the pawn and activates my piece. But this is... This is not good. This is not good. 
I'm gonna need to move my queen in a way that it guards this square because I don't want this queen check to happen without a queen trade. So I'm thinking of this move. The rook could capture here, but my knight is guarding the bishop. So, so far, that's not bad for me. And again, all these checks and then taking now the triple stack. She first pushes my queen away, then goes back to the e5 for the triple stack. And this is a big threat. This is an annoying, very annoying move. I'm gonna place the knight here. I think that gives me some practical chances because if she chases me away with f3, at least I have a pin. Well, yeah, I definitely think she's very annoying. c4, just positionally protecting the pawn. It's a passed pawn. It's a passed pawn for her. Wait a second, I thought I had... Okay, I forgot about the material can. So originally, when she won my rook, I had a minor piece and a pawn. And then she sacrificed her bishop for two pawns. So now, the current state of material, I have two minor pieces and she has a rook and a pawn, which is exactly the same material. A knight and a bishop is 3 plus 3. A rook and a pawn is 5 plus 1. So we are on the same count. But her pieces are super active. Man! <laughs> Typex, thank you so much for the subscription. Thank you for the support. We are almost at 2100. Almost. <sighs> this is a pass pawn. I'm gonna have to try to poke this pawn. But if I place the bishop here, that steps into the triple stack. She can't take it just yet though. Bishop e6, f3. Then this rook is pinned. Maybe I should try to do that. My king is so open, it doesn't have proper protection, but for now this knight is standing great on e4. I'm just worried that Anna is annoying enough to push the pawn in the right moment, chase me away and then use the e5. Will she try to get the king out of that diagonal? I'm curious. But for now, let's, let's attack that pawn and see how she reacts. Bishop e6, f3, I'm gonna jump back with the knight. I could go to d6 too and attack that pawn again. And she cannot take my bishop because of the pin. Let's hope. Let's hope we are fighting back. Man, she's playing instantly. <sighs> Why is she so fast? See, that's something that I clearly didn't have as a competitive player. I was not a fast player. I may have been an a more accurate player, especially in classical games. I like to think and make sure that I have the right calculation. I would spend quite some time on every game. But she's playing instantly. <laughs> so her idea is if I trade the rooks, she's connecting her pawns. And once again, that will strengthen her position. She is playing exactly for the same type of ideas I used to. This is not the winning move, but it strengthens your position little by little. So step by step, she's trying to get a better and better and better position. If I don't take, she's chasing my rook away from the B file. And once my rook is away, she's gonna have this check. And that's another one of those irritating moves. What do I do? What can I do? So let's see. The problem is, um, if I take, that guards the pawn. And this is the pawn I'm trying to take. If I take the pawn now, that attacks the queen, and attacks the rook. Wait, what is going on with bishop c4? So bishop takes c4. She's not gonna give up her queen, will she? I'm... I'm definitely not a Bottas Gambit type of player. I was not a Bottas Gambit type of player. Um, bishop takes... Oh, she's got queen b2 check. And then take my rook. Just when I hoped that my bot is blundering something, she's not. She has solved more puzzle rush sessions than I do in IRL, I guess. Man, I cannot take the pawn because of this check. So annoying, I've just realized that if I move the rook away, this check and queen here, my king is under attack. <sighs> rook b4 could be an idea to... At least I keep the b5. I think I'm gonna try that. 
think up I think some of you said rugby four. I'm gonna listen to you. A uh, rook b4. Because at least if we trade on b4, I can I can just close that open file with my pawn. And I'm attacking the pawn again. Let's try this. Let's see what she has up her sleeve. Hopefully nothing. Um <laughs> she just keeps making moves instantly. Taking another open file. Yeah great stuff great stuff so if i take the pawn now what is her idea what's your idea Anna? what is she doing i think i think she got confused too a little bit and that, that used to happen to me with material imbalance especially, exchange up down, and not the same type of pieces. It's difficult to evaluate the position. And that happened in a couple of my games too, that I wasn't sure um, when I'm still playing for a win and when you should start playing for perhaps to equalize. I don't think she wants to equalize just yet, but I, I do think she used to have more attack. I think she used to have a, a better position than this. Because now my minor pieces are active. I'm about to take this pawn. I have managed to improve my position. And she hasn't made the most of her rooks yet. She tried. But she hasn't done so. She hasn't achieved it. She still may be planning queen b2. Because bishop takes c4. Attacks the queen. Attacks the rook. So she still definitely wants to give that check. But now my rook is not hanging. Bishop takes queen b2. I could step aside. Uh, the thing is then the rook comes okay so bishop takes i think this check and the combination of the rook coming in i'm gonna get checkmated <laughs> but i think i could take with the queen because i want to trade queens i want to get rid of the queen so if i take with the queen um at least my bishop is guarding this square so there's no rook coming in she could still go for this check i'll step aside and then rook c1 She's annoying because if this, this, here, rook to c1, then she's threatening to give a check on c7 and soon checkmate uh, with the queen coming in on g7. What if I take with the rook to guard the c5 and in case, in case of this check, I was gonna say if I have rook c3 but that pin is terrifying. No, I can't do that. How do I save my king? She's not supposed to be a good attacker. She's an endgame player, mainly endgame player. She's not that brilliant at attacking skills and tactics. Anna. <laughs> How do I save my king? I can go back with the knight to block my king. True. Which move order is the best for that? So I can take here, let's say with the queen, queen b2 check and come back with the knight. Rook c1, or rook, yeah, rook c1 should be the move. But that's not too bad, is it? I guess I should go for that. I should try to trade pieces. I need to trade pieces because my king is constantly in, a, in danger. I need to get rid of some of the pieces. I need an end game. I need an end game against end game player Anna. I need an end game. So, queen takes, queen b2, knight f6. So far so good. And if rook c1, I can place the queen here and that guards this square. I think I'm gonna go for that. Dunkling, thank you so much for the four months. Thank you. That's a that's a long streak. Longer than my, my calculation streak here. <laughs> Not even a four move streak. Let's go for this and see what she has. Is the arrow drawing only for premium chess subscription? No, everyone can draw, but you need to set it up in in this somewhere in here. Um, I don't remember which one. Um, maybe not here, but on your profile, but you can draw arrows. Everyone can. So she gives this check and this is our big brain plan. We're gonna come back with the rook, not the rook. We're gonna come back with the knight 
which self pins the knight so it's not ideal this knight is now um, in a pin but the idea was that after the knight comes back okay I'm gonna try to pause the position there after the knight comes back rook c1 I have this square for my queen to guard c7 I want to make sure that the rook doesn't get to the seventh rank with a check so she played rook to b1 triple stack now on the b5 because she wants me to take and then she'll take back with the pawn i would assume let's go for it i mean this end game now is much better than what i had i was an exchange down i was an exchange down and now i have two minor pieces for a rook she doesn't even have the pawn anymore maybe i'm gonna start to play for a win anna show me your end game skills show me those end game skills because i can trade and then see, will she take back with the queen or the pawn? Pawn makes more sense, because once again, this queen is a strong one on the diagonal, but then she will have to move the rook again. She will have to move it to a more useful fight than the b file. How do I get rid of this pin? I'm gonna have to move my king out at some point. Where is my queen standing better for that? Because this move I will need. I cannot, I cannot get my queen to this diagonal, unfortunately. If I place my queen here, that guards the d1 square, so that's an active square for my queen. And that also attacks b3, because I'm pretty sure she will end up trying to take my a pawn, uh, either with the rook or with the queen, and I want I will want to trade the b pawn for it. So queen d3 to keep pressure on the b3 pawn, and then I'm gonna have to run away from this diagonal. Hopefully I'm gonna have enough time to do so. Hopefully I will have enough time to do so. Let's see. Let's see. I'm much more confident than before. Before, when she won the exchange, that was a sad, very sad position. B4. So she wants me to trade and have the B file. Makes sense, but that is getting close to a very simplified drawish position. My king is still vulnerable, but if I get to defend the king, that could be a draw. We could trade and have a simplified position where we're gonna try to defend our king and if we defend our king successfully, maybe not that move, I would blunder him instantly. Um, yeah, this queen is coming in. If I trade, the queen is threatening to come here. So perhaps I should play king f7, guard this square and if she gives a check, I'm gonna use my knight. I think that's, that's defendable. My king will be under attack, but if I defend that position, it should be a draw. Can I play for more than a draw is the question. If I push the pawn, I have a passed pawn. And then I could push and push again. Can we try that? Does it make sense to, to let her keep that pawn so she will also have a passed pawn? A4. She has this passed pawn and she will push it for sure. I know her. I, I know she will push it. A3. So we both will try to promote our pawns she could play queen b4 and threaten this check but it's not too bad that check if the bishop comes here will i get ambitious and play for a win will i get ambitious here will i get ambitious or are we going for the draw because i i'm pretty sure we can make a draw if we trade but if we push if we push we could play for a win we could also end up losing the game <laughs> we could also end up losing the game but my only winning chance is to keep the pawn on the board that's my only winning chance and then i could place the bishop here too so it has it has quite some pluses but it also means that my king will still be an issue and this pass pawn is an asset for her are we going for it guys are we going for it are we going for it um it has some risk factor, but I think this is the best move. I think this is the best move and I think we should try to beat myself. I think I should try to win against myself. What do you guys think? Let me know. Let me know. I'm going to take a look at the comments, what you're saying. Oh, <laughs> before I break my chair. Coach, you got to play for a bit. Okay, if Yamato is saying it, if Yamato is saying it, we are going for it. I'm not scared of you, Anna. I'm not scared, but now I'm totally scared. She's threatening to go. Okay, it's not too bad. She's threatening to give this check. She's threatening to give that check. The knight is pinned, but we can still use the bishop to guard the king. So things aren't bad. Um, and a3 attacks the queen. She will probably end up playing queen e5. And then the bishop is hanging. Well, I think I could drop 
back here. And she doesn't have time to play rook c6 because the back rack is still an issue. So Anna, the bot, may have an issue because of that tempo. She needs to spend a time. I'm gonna attack the queen. The queen will come here, move the bishop, and she will have to spend a move on h3 or g3. She needs to open up the back rank before moving the rook. And that gives me some time to push the pawn. We are playing for a win. Anna, the bot, we are going for you. We are so going for you. Please tell me that I'm not overconfident. <laughs> Please tell me that I didn't get too confident here. So the bishop is hanging. I just want to drop it back here and guard the king. I want the safe king as possible, as safe as possible. And she doesn't have rook c6 because of the back rank. And as soon as we get the pawn to a2, I hope she is in trouble. I sure hope he's in, that she is in trouble because she won an exchange in the middle game at the very early stage of the middle game. And then I was like, goodness me, she's crushing me again. Uh, can I push now? Not really because giving up the bishop here just yet. Although I have then queen b1. Wait a second. <laughs> Wait a second. Okay, I don't think... I don't think it's winning. Um, if a2, queen takes, queen b1, she can come back. She can, first of all, give me tons of checks, which I don't want. I don't want even a perpetual. But even if she comes back with the queen, I'm not promoting. Well, I can promote, but my queen is hanging. So let's not get too confident. I'm just gonna drop the bishop back here, guard everything, and push next move. She's pushing her bus pawn. Um, which is annoying <laughs> because she's gonna make it to this square and I need to somehow control this pawn. How do I how do I make sure that she will not queen before me? A2, B6, I can play queen B1, attack the rook. If she takes my queen, I'm promoting and it's it's back rank mate. So A2, B6, Queen B1. She has to guard the rook or come back with the queen, but then I can in worst case scenario, take the pawn. I think that's great. I think we have a good chance to take down this darn bot <laughs> called Anna. Queen back to b2. Okay, she is guarding the b1 square and supporting her pass pawn at the same time. I'm telling you, she's very annoying. So we cannot play this, this idea anymore. We could place the queen here or the bishop, but I don't want to let this happen with a check. Let's see. Let's see, what do we do? Um, Rival Taking, thank you so much for the subscription. Thank you for the support. We are almost at 2100. I don't know if the sub count is showing the right number or not. I'm not sure. Okay, <laughs> it used to show two subscribers last night, showing two subscribers more. It's approximately the number we have. We are trying to get to 2100 again. And we have a new emote to release today after the bot match. Okay, let's focus. Anna, focus. So, her idea is to keep pushing. And we need to make sure that's not gonna happen. I could play this move to try to trade queens. Um, if we do trade, then she pushes. I can then stop her pawn. And she doesn't have the time to win my bishop because I'm one square away from promotion. So... An endgame would be good, because this pawn is extremely strong, it ties down the rook, it pins it to the back rank. So queen b3, what will be her move? If she moves on the same diagonal, she has to protect the pawn, but then I have queen b1. A triangle! Get, those of you who have the GM Hikaru triangle emote, can you, can you please use it to bring us good luck? I think if I play this move, she comes back. We have a triangle here with the queen. See that triangle that we are drawing? It's a triangle. And I think it's I think it's a good one. I think it's a really good one. I sure hope it's working because I want to beat myself. I want to destroy her after she beat me in the first game. I'm back to competitive mode because she crushed me in the first game. That was such a bad blunder. After queen b3, she doesn't have many other options. Queen e2, same idea, queen b1. And promoting them. So, yeah, let's go for it. I think we gotta go for it. 
Let's go! Let's go! She's going for the end game, but again, she doesn't have the time to use the rook, so she can push. But now I can drop back with the bishop, guard this square, and she doesn't have the time to win my bishop because I'm promoting too. I can play without my queen. Seriously, Anna? Oh, it's not like you've been known for playing end games your whole life. You always go for some 78 move or 110 move game with just the king and pawns and a knight on the board and you're playing your end games forever and ever. But this is not a good end game for her. My pawn is stronger than hers. I need to stop it though. I need to stop her and I need to come back here in order to stop her or Okay, let's 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 go big brain. I need I need to sit in a big brain position. Big brain. Um, I can stop it with the bishop, the pawn, or I can use my knight, let her push it all the way here, but then try to take it, although then she'll play rook a1. Um, then I could go... I need to bring my king afterwards. Okay, knight d7 or bishop d5 are my two options. If I play knight d7... So... By principle, this is a better move because it it stops the pawn earlier. Usually you should try to stop the opponent's pass pawn as soon as you can. Don't let it approach the back rank. But I'm thinking, if I use my knight to guard this promotion square, then I can have my bishop to try to crawl into b1. Because if I have my bishop on b1, I'm threatening to promote. So she would need to, she would need to first of all, after b7, bishop c2 she has to move the rook into the corner but then i can i can get her trapped i could have my bishop on b1 and trap her bishop uh, trap her rook in the corner with my bishop then she will approach with the king my bishop and try to take my bishop for the rook if i if i keep the bishop on b1 and i have to to guard the pawn she should try to bring the king to c1. Can you guys see that position? With the rook here, my bishop here, her king will come here. So in end games, you need to think in a way that it's not like, it's not always move by move, but ideas, patterns, and what setup you go for. If I do get her rook trapped in the corner with my bishop here, she has to bring her king close and try to give up her rook for the bishop and my pawn. And that will be an endgame where my knight is guarding the promotion square and I bring my king close to her pass pawn and I'm gonna try to capture her pawn with my king. And that should be a winning endgame if I have my knight versus the pawns with my king capturing the B pawn. So I think that's a winning plan. Now, the question is, first you, you need to see the endgame plan, the setup you need. And then if you can execute it, so move by move, does it work? Does it work to stop the pawn with the knight? She will push and then I'm using my bishop to try to get here and promote my pawn. I think it's working. <laughs> I think it is. I think, I think Anna the bot, even though she says she can play without her queen, I think she had better positions in this game. I think she spoiled her advantage. So, I'm gonna go for it. Hopefully, hopefully this setup is winning. So we are guarding this square with the knight. And now we're gonna use the bishop to come to b1, threaten to promote. She has to stop me after bishop c2. She has to put the rook in the corner. Then we're gonna trap the rook in there, bring our king here, capture this pawn, let her take the bishop. And even if she doesn't take the bishop, her rook is trapped in the corner forever. So she's gonna play the rest of the game without the rook bishop here trap it and now we need the king here get the pawn and she will come here take this but then again in that position we will already have a knight up and if she doesn't take it as i said the rook is forever trapped let's go let's go Wait, she's going for my pawns too. Okay, that's that's smart, but it also means that once I get rid of her pawn, she will not be able to sacrifice the rook. So this was gonna be a more defensive option to get the king here and sacrifice the rook. What she's doing, she's trying to get my pawns, which is a pretty good practical chance because if she can take these pawns, 
she will also have an H pass pawn. So let's see what can we do in that position. I clearly don't want to go back and defend with my king, that's too passive. We have a couple of options here. Option one is to just keep going, get this pawn because that's her biggest asset, that's, that's her biggest counter chance. In the meantime she'll go and get this pawn. Then will I be able to guard the H pawn? Not really. But at the same time, at the same time, because she didn't go and sacrifice the rook for my bishop, after I get this pawn, that frees up my knight, and I can start jumping toward her rook. And I'm gonna end up winning the rook. She's gonna have to give up her rook for my pawn. But in that position, she will, she will be taking these pawns of mine, by the time my knight is here, she's gonna take here and she'll probably capture my f pawn too. She could end up having three pawns fighting versus my two pieces. Can you guys see it? Can you guys see that? So, that would be one option. But another option is that I try to hold the pawn with my king. And then, before I let her take this, I either push this pawn to give that pawn up and guard. Or, I use then my knight. So, king here, king here. And I can, I can protect this with knight e5 or knight f8. Um, knight e5 is more active, but that will be attacked by the pawn. But then again, I can go for her pawns too. <sighs> I think that's the way to go. I think we should try to use the knight partially for defense, but also to get toward the rook. Let's see. Knight and bishop mate inbound. Hopefully I know how to. No, I'm supposed to know it. I'm supposed to, but with three pawns running against my knight and bishop, I need to get to her, her pawns first. So it's not that simple. Knight and bishop made fine, but getting rid of the three pawns. So this is necessary regardless. And then next step, we're gonna see after king g5, whether we go knight e5 or knight f8 to guard the pawn, or we take and then go with the knight toward the rook. So these are the... These are the, the main options here. So, okay, uh, Anna, focus. Focus, because you are close to beating yourself <laughs> um, in all sorts of ways, because uh, I'm gonna go and get a mental breakdown at, uh, at this stage. But no, uh, we are good. Um, we have a couple of options. We can take the pawn, but that will give up this. And unfortunately, after the g6 pawn is gone, the h5 pawn to disappear. So I'm gonna either use the knight to guard the pawn. Knight e5, she can attack my knight. Then I, I would be able to jump to g4 to try to get this, but she can attack that. Then knight e3. So if I get some of her pawns, f4, knight g4, takes here. I take here, but she takes this. That doesn't matter though, because... Oh no, wait. I thought I had an idea to block all of her king's side. So, one more time. Allergy times. Allergy times, but apart from that. So, if I... This, is, this would be the more passive way of defending the pawns, but then the king will start moving toward my knight. And I, I cannot protect this pawn on the long run. Unless, after knight f8, king f6, it's then when I push my f pawn. It will take her quite a long time to get rid of the f pawn. But I could also go knight e5 as a more active choice, and after f4... After f4, here takes takes. So after knight e5, f4, knight d3, she should play g3. Thank you, Liam, as well for the subscription. Thank you for the support. Liam for dead. <laughs> Thank you, Liam's dead for the subscription. Psychonaut, I'm sorry if I missed your sub. I'm trying to I'm trying to focus on the game, so I'm I'm sorry if I'm missing some of the notifications. It's not intentional. Okay, and I think here, 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 G3. Then I could I 
could then turn toward the rook, but I don't want to give up too many pawns on the king side. I know this is winning, but I want to make sure I play more accurately so that I don't have to fight against three pawns with my two minor pieces. I want to keep some of my pawns. So we could also do this, knight f8, to win some time. It's more passive, but it wins some time if white has to come here, then I push, so I don't sacrifice the pawn immediately. If she then attacks the pawn, I could push g5. And then she comes back to f6. I have this check. It's a bit passive, but as long as as long as I hold the king side as for as many moves as I can, I'm gonna take this pawn and march with my king toward her rook. So I don't necessarily need to bring my knight to that side. I could just bring my king. I could bring my king here. She at some point needs to take this with the rook um, and drive my bishop away from the defense of my pawns. I think a couple of these options are good. Um, I'm gonna go for this one to win some time. It's passive, but it wins It wins a moment to push this pawn. G3. Oh, she wants to trade all my pawns. But that's okay. That's fine, because I, I think we know how to give mate with bishop and knight. And I just need to make sure I have both of my pieces. I need to make sure I'm gonna have both of my minor pieces. Thank you so much, Nimzoglass, for the subscription. Thank you for your support. Thank you so much. Big C for the donation. Um, I'm I'm trying to be very focused here. Apologies that I'm I'm not really uh, able to to respond now to your questions regarding um, regarding improvement. Um, you're saying a chess book recommendation for semi beginners. Let me let me address that later, please, because I I don't want to spend too much time on this game. Please please tag me after the game and uh, ask me about that again. I'm gonna try to respond uh, after the game. So, uh, she wants to take here, we, we could simply trade, then capture the pawn, this is important to get rid of, and then I'm threatening to run toward her rook. Even if, she, even if we trade all the pieces, or the pawns, I mean, if we trade all the pawns on the king side, which she cannot really achieve just yet, it's gonna take her some time and effort if she can even achieve it. But without the pawns on the king side, let's, let's say if we do get rid of all these pawns, that endgame is still winning for me because knight and bishop, it's possible to give mate with knight and bishop. I just need to make sure I'm gonna win both. Uh, I'm gonna keep both pieces on the board because I'm gonna win the rook. So take. And now um, she, she will probably attack my knight next move but my bishop is guarding this pawn. I think what she will end up doing um, that's one of her threats, is that if I take, she's gonna attack my knight, I'm jumping away, and then she could use that moment to sacrifice the rook for my pawn and then take this pawn, and after this pawn is gone, she'll take this pawn. But it's still better to fight two pawns than three, and I'm gonna win some of her pawns too, so I'm not scared of that at all. I'm not scared of that position. Let's go. Hikaru lost twice to my bot. Seriously? Seriously? <laughs> he lost twice to my bot. I also lost the terrible game just now, but this one we are winning. We are winning this one. She's trying to go back because now I have this very clear idea. She's running back to then give up the rook. But as long as I have pawns on the board, that knight end game is winning. I just need to make sure she cannot trade everything. So here we go. Let's approach this way. I can go zigzag too. I can go zigzag. Now I'm gonna give this check to see. Well, will I actually? I was gonna say I'm gonna give this check to see where she goes. Um, but I can go here, and if she comes back, then I'm approaching her pawns. So her rook is stuck forever. Whether she gives it up for my bishop or not, her rook is stuck forever. And the king and the pawn and game with my extra knight is completely winning. If she pushes g4, I'm gonna push h4. I'm not trading all my pawns. And I wanna approach these pawns. She's trying her best, but uh, I think her best is not enough for this game. Uh, in order to make sure that she cannot get rid of all my pawns, I'm gonna start marching toward her pawns, guard these squares. 
She's not going for that setup where she will be able to give up the rook for the bishop and the pawn, but it's too late because I'm getting these pawns. And this is a winning endgame. This is a winning endgame. I can play this to take. I can play this to take those. Yeah, let's go for the fancy way of giving up the knight for this and pass pawn. Anna, you tried your best, but in this endgame, in this endgame, Anna the bot has not prevailed. I'm gonna promote this pawn and I think I can give checkmate with the queen. I think. Anna bot, now you resign, but someone tell her to resign. She doesn't know how to resign. She doesn't want to resign. She doesn't want to resign. Make a bishop. Shoot, I missed it. <laughs> I should, have, I should have promoted to a bishop. I missed my chance. Wait, okay. No, I don't, I will not. I will not be that rude to Annabot because I was, I was thinking if you guys want me to give bishop and knight checkmate, I can give up my queen and then promote this one to a bishop. But I think, I think that's not really, I think that's not really nice. I don't want to bully her. No, no, I'm not going to bully her. Just saying stop coming after my king. I will not stop though, Anna. Because it's, it's mate next move. It's mate next move. I can show you on a different board the knight and bishop made. But I'm not going to bully her. She was nice. And you should not troll your opponents. You should not bully your opponents. Anna, but thank you for the game. You played amazingly well. Maybe you should be a guest on my Twitch stream. Thank you, Anna. That would be an honor. That would be an honor to be your guest. <laughs> thank you so much for watching this was streamed live on my twitch channel where i stream full time five days a week do catch us live next time or follow the highlights and the votes here on my youtube channel in either case i really appreciate your support thank you so much again and bye for now until the next time <laughs>